Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivaraman of iNoindices.com. I am going to present here Tracking the Forex Market Together Part 2 on May 28th between 14 and 14.45 GMT. I have given the live trading decision during the Tracking the Forex Market Together webinar Part 1 between 5 and 5.45 GMT during the Japanese session. So what happened to those trade calls and how exactly those positions have been closed, you will review it. And subsequently, I will also explain with regard to what decisions we have made with regard to the trades, how we have taken the decision, then what happened to the highs and the lows in each of the currency pairs, the four majors and two commodity pairs. Then we will also review with regard to the current market condition and try to decide upon the trading. Now it is exactly 14 GMT, 30 minutes past of the European, past of the US session. So I want to do just to give you the timings and go to that of the live trading decision now, then review the calls what I have made with regard to the Japanese session because this time is crucial otherwise we will miss the market. Now Japanese session is from 0030 to 730 GMT. Then gap time is 7.30 to 8 GMT. European session is 8 to 13, 30, 13 GMT. Then gap time is 13, 30, 13 to 13.30 13 GMT. US session starts by 13.30 GMT. And we are now at 14 GMT. 30 minutes past the start of the US session. These are all the timings followed by that of the big players and nothing else. And it gets over by 20.30 GMT. Then again you come across the gap time. And I have made a remark in the blog that during the gap time whatever the move you come across the false move they gain the levels in the case of euro and gbp during the gap time so from there i had given the post that they intended to drop during the start of the u.s session exactly they made the drop and subsequently they started gaining the levels so how exactly the basic trading strategy has to be What's the forex market in all six pairs, four majors and two commodity pairs, 30 minutes from the start of the session. So exactly 30, 30, 13, 30, the US session has started, 14 GMT, 30 minutes is over. Now we will review whether we can take a buy position or a sell position. Take a sell position if a pair is near the high and not cut the high during the 30 minutes of watching. Or take a buy position if a pair is near low and not cut the low during the 30 minutes of watching. It's simple. Then, once the position is taken, you can fine tune the position by keeping a limit order about 2-3 pips below that of the current market level so that they will be able to fill it during small swing. Otherwise, straight you can take a market position also, does not matter. But if you want to fine tune, you can just always keep about 5 pips or 3 pips below that of the market a limit order and you will get a definite skill on that during the small swing. Then once the position is taken, immediately keep 30 pips stop. If it is a buy position below that or a sell position above that or a hedging order. If the hedging facility is available in the platform, in the platform it is called as an entry stop to limit the risk. So that we at a given time take only risk for about 30 minutes, nothing more than that. Uh, sorry, 30 pips. Then once the position makes about 20-30 pips profit, keep stop at entry and remove the hedging order. So that is there ends the purpose of the hedging. Then if the market goes against, we will not lose anything and only our position will be closed at stop at entry. The market moves in our favor, we will be able to book profit by converting that stop into a trailing stop. Then we can also keep 30, 45 or 75 pips limit depending upon the market condition. Then if the market is subdued, about 30 pips you can aim for or 45 pips you can aim for. And if it is a good move, you come across a good swing is seen, then 75 pips or even 100 pips you can keep. And that you can move away from that other market. The limit you can move away from that other market as they gain the levels in the case of a buy position. Then your trailing stop will also be gaining the level so that you will be able to maximize the profit. If they reverse, then immediately the trailing stop will be filled and you will be able to realize the profit. So that is how the basic trading strategy is. So I will explain with regard to the advantages of hedging after taking the position because I want to take the position. So in the US session, Euro and GBB are expected to make volatile moves and spike up for the weekend. So this is the forecast. So 
So what exactly we can do now? It has already gone out and it came down to that level of 1.2343 uh, and subsequently it has gained the levels and current level is 1.2357, uh, 1.2355 and 1.2357. So let me take a buy position. 1.2357 with an entry stop of 30 cubes because it is closer to that of the low and it is not breached to the low so I am trying to take the buy position hope you are able to understand on what basis I have taken a trading position in the case of GBP also 1.4492 is the low and I have given the link and they can hope I have given the link yeah the link I have you can make use of and see where exactly the market is and subsequently you can understand that how exactly I am taking the trading position. So 1.4492 is the uh, low and low has not been breached and currently GBP is trading around 1.453135. So I will take a buy position 1.453135. With an entry stop of 30 cents. Then EM, the low is 90.87, which was formed during the start of the Japanese session. And during the start of the Europe US session, they came down up to that of 90.87. The ask was shown as 90.87, but they are not breached it. That is a typical false move. So I'll take up my position. I'll take a buy position here and that will be 90 point it's already come to 91 91.04 with an entry stop of 30 cents. then in the case of Australian dollar morning I kept the order around that low that has not filled and now you find the market is closer to the double low 0.8451 is the new low and morning it was around 0.8464 so they made a brief downward stop and, and then gained the level it has come to the level of 0.848184 call so I will take a buy position here they made a brief downward stop and 0.8487 with an entry stop of so these are all the positions I want to initially show it to you and with regard to the denominator currency I will explain to you later. So after taking the position let me go back to the review of the positions which are taken during that of the Japanese session and what happened to those positions. So that is what I gave the call that I will review what happened to those trades and also review with regard to the initial highs and the lows. The call I have given in the morning in this session, that is Japanese session, Euro and GBB are expected to make swing and firm up move and review it during the US session or two of the tracking the forex market together. Where you know, now we are reviewing it, what happened with the trades. So Euro had kept initial buy order at 1.2285, just three pips below, above that of 1.2282 that was not filled. And I have served for about 30 minutes, it has not filled. So I verified the order and took a buy order at 1.2323. And then you know that Euro went up to 1.26, uh, sorry, 2451. And then I used the trailing stop and that got it filled it around 1.2430. 107 pips has been gained. And the hedging order was not filled, which has kept 30 pips below that of the market. Then in the case of GPP, I kept a buy order at 45, 37. You know that they made a downward stop and, and that got hedged at uh, 44, 97. And subsequently, I kept stop at entry and they filled the stop at entry and I kept a new hedging order below that, 30 pips below the market and trailed it up. And then again, they raised GPP during the early European session. I explained already during the Japanese session since I, I was taking the position during the late Japanese session, 
I will hold the position till that of the cap time and also the European session and try to close the position. That's what I explained. If the position is taken during the start of the session, then it can be closed before the close of the session itself. You will be able to see the trending happening and you will be able to book profit. Then I was able to close it using a trailing stop around 4590 and 53 pips is being realized. Then CHF I kept a yeah, buy order because the morning the low was 1.14 uh, one four nine nine. So I kept about two pips above one point one five zero one a buy limit order that got filled during that of the European session when Euro was rising. See, just got filled and then entry stop was placed thirty pips below and thirty pips below the market low current low is one point one four eight two. You know that it has not been filled and subsequently it went up during towards close of the European session. Then I closed it around. 1.15411. So that position was closed with 39 pips profit. But I am not recommending you to take position in all currency pairs, just explaining to you how exactly taking the positions based on the high and the low, we will be able to see real profit in the positions. But since your equity will be limited, obviously you have to focus either euro or GBP and or USD yen or any own currency in which you are interested and try to take the position and see that you are able to effectively use the trading strategy and earn from that of the market rather than simply talking about various aspects of the market. And then I kept the buy order at 1990 in the Japanese yen that was not filled and it was hovering around around 91.24 all the time and it, was, it went up only to that of 91.40 and not after that, so that order I removed it once the Europe mid European session also they are not cut the low. I just removed the order when they are not filled it because I wanted to take a fresh position during that of the US session. And now you know that I had taken the position. If the position, if the order is not filled, doesn't matter because. Existing position, we should try to maximize the profit rather than simply taking position in all currencies. For a demo purpose, I am trying to show you how exactly in any currency that you will be able to take the position based on the basic trading strategy. Then, in the case of Australian dollar also, 84.64 was the low and I kept the buy order at 84.67 that was not filled because all along it was trading around 85 area, so that order also removed it. In Canadian dollar, I kept a limit at 1.0484 and that limit got filled and subsequently market came down to that of 1.0454 and my position got hedged 30 bits below and then I kept stop at entry that was stopped out and again I kept the buy order, I mean the sell entry stop order at 1.0454. So I have still 1.0484. The buy position in the case of Canadian dollar, since it is not making any adverse move, and also I was able to stop out the entry stop at entry, and subsequently that was not get, got hedged. So I am holding the position to try to book profit during that of the European session. Otherwise, I can simply hedge it and or close the position also with a nominal loss because I have obtained profit in other positions. With regard to JBBN and Euro N, I kept the order below that of the low. The morning initial low was in the case of GBBN as 132.25 uh, uh, and that was not filled, but now you find that they made a downward stop and because of the drop in the case of USBN and subsequently came the level. So that order was also removed. Then in the case of Euro GBB, near that of the high, uh, 80, 84.92 was the high, so I kept a sell order at 8489 when it was trading around 84.56 during the uh, part 1 webinar time. Then subsequently that order got filled and I kept a 50 pips hedging order and that is around 85.39 and you know the current high in the case of uh, Euro GBP is 85.35. So still it has not been filled and they have come to that level of 8480, they have come to that level of 8504 and subsequently I am expecting 
I am expecting a drop in the case of Euro GBP and during that time I will try to keep stop at entry then try to maximize the profit in it. So that is why King and entry stop is a very important aspect in trading. So the trading decision when you take till you have to envisage the market can go, go against us. So no forecast can give a foolproof system wherein once you enter and thereby you will be making a definite profit because there is always an element of risk involved in trading. So the hedging is a must. If the hedging facility is available in the trading platform, otherwise a stop is a must. It is better to accept when the loss is small rather than allowing the loss to magnify because they are doing frequent stop and if you avoid keeping the stop, then you will be compelled to keep a stop or compelled to close the position with a bigger loss. And you have come to the market not to make losses, only to make profit. And if you ask anybody, are you coming to the market to make losses? They will say no. But in the process, they continue to lose the money. And that is what many of the statistics say that 95% of the traders are losing money in the market. Why? Because they have the emotional binding and they go with that misguidance. And when the misguidance is with regard to the economic conditions of various countries, etc., people worry about the other countries and rather than themselves, then you come across invariably, they are emotionally triggered. And you know that the Greek problem, how long they have been talking about, whenever they want, they were able to talk about it, whenever they don't want, they, they simply ignored it and they, made, they have been making up and down moves in that. So, obviously, you know that the problem is not going to be solved just overnight or in few hours. So, we have to understand that this sort of information, they try to use it in order to trigger the market or to create this market sentiment and subsequently, they act against that of the trade. So, let me go to that of the uh, slide again. Then, what happened to the highs and the lows in each of the currency pairs? Now, I, I had given the link for that of the uh, live market put page. Let me focus the camera over to the live market put page. Now you see that currently Euro is trading around 1.2359. The low was 1.2282 right from morning or from that of the Japanese session. They have not breached that particular low whereas they breached the high. So let me also uh, focus the camera over that of the the initial highs and the lows set for today so that it is easy for you to compare it to that of the live market code page now and understand because many people would not have noted down the initial lows and the highs so in the case of euro the initial low was 1.2282 then the high was 1.2379 and they breached the high of 1.2379 and they went up to 1.2451 and then dropped they made the drop only to that of the psychological level 1.2350 and made a brief downward stop and below that and then subsequently made the gain again. Then in the case of GBP 1.4536 was the initial low. They breached and formed a new low. In the live market code page you can see that 1.4492 is the low and currently it is trading around 1.452529 level but they are not breached the later on low form 1.4492 and whereas 1.4588 was a morning initial high and they breached and formed a new high 1.4610 you can understand how they made an upward stop and in the case of GPP and dropped it and in the first 30 minutes they are not dropped below that of the initial low so they are not expected to drop GPP below that of the initial low so that is why I have taken a buy position at the current market level because I will not be able to get it exactly near that of the low because they keep closer to that of 1.4525 or 1.4550 that particular psychological level in between they are holding the market now and try to inducing the traders uh, to create the bearish feel and also they are trying to handle that of the Euro GBP cross and the other GBP cross as well so they try to uh, hold high Euro GBB and subsequently without cutting the high and currently Euro GBB is showing about 30 pips positive net change and slowly will find during the course of the day 
they will slide erogenity. And also in the case of USB CHM, I explained that they made a downward stop in the, on the lowest side and as well as the, uh, the high is in that 1.1572. And in the case of GBP, 90.87 was the low and they came exactly up to that. And the ask was shown as 90.87 and definitely in the platform they would have triggered the stops which are around 90.84 and things like that. And they would not have filled if you would have kept a buy order at 90.87 and that is how the platforms work. And 91.34 that again they breached on the upside during that of the European session when Euro and GP were rising in order to gain the levels in the case of the end crosses and subsequently made that drop. And again, in the case of end crosses, they are expected to gain the levels as they wanted to continue to make the contrarian move of gaining the levels in the case of Euro and GPP and also UNTN. Australian dollar, I was explaining that 84.96 was the low and they breached the low and formed a new low, 84.51 and again, they are trading around 84.73.76 above that of the initial low. So, you can understand when you make a note of the initial lows and the highs, you will be able to compare throughout the day, which is formed between 2.30 and 3.30 GMT for the day during the Japanese session. And throughout the day, you can use it as a reference level and see how exactly they were taking the market up and down and understand their intention. Then the high in the case of Australian dollar was 85.32. They breached the high briefly. We formed a new high, 85.49. That was an upward stop and then subsequently made it drop. That is why I gave the title today for the blog, Either Way Moves, and then finally rise. In case of uh, Canadian dollar, 1.0481 was the low, and subsequently they dropped below that and showed 1.0446 as the low, and currently it has come to 1.0480 level, and it's trying to come up, and once it comes up above that, then you'll find 1.0518 is not far off and already they made an upward stop and, and formed the high 1.0526. So, you can understand how they are trying to hit the stops below that of the low, above that of the high during the day. If you make a note of the initial lows and the highs between 2.30 and 3.30 from that of the live market court page, that can be the reference level throughout the day. And also you come across in the live market court page net change. So now currently Euro is showing a net change of 20 pips negative and GBB is showing a negative net change of 74 pips and they have made a little more drop and my positions are making losses and as I explained they are expected to make the volatile moves and then firm up. So since I won't be having much time so I take the position but still I kept the hedging order to limit the risk so there is no fear at all. So. <coughs> I'll focus the camera now over that of the PowerPoint presentation of the current track in the forex market together webinar part 2. Then I explained the session timing and if you want you can take a screenshot or make a reference to that and anyhow it is being recorded and you can just listen to the recorded version again and understand and if there are still questions you can ask me in the current uh, webinar or afterwards also in the blog I will be willing to answer those questions. So basic trading strategy I explained it. So when the market is near that of the high you can take a sell when the market is near that of the low and not breached it you can take a buy. So currently you find that they are making around it is 1424 GMP they are making a small a small volatile move that is what I explained it uh, on the focus page. In the US session, Euro and GB, we are expected to make volatile moves and spike up. That's what I explained. Now, I'll come to that of the hedging part of it with reference to the positions I had taken. So, these are all the positions I explained. Euro, I took a position at 1.2357 and it is made a dip and the current level is 1.234244 and GB, I took a position at 1.4535. And current level is 1.4503, 1.4507 level. So 30 pips below, I kept the hedging order. In case I think they showed a level just below that of 1.45. Uh, uh, so suppose my position is hedged at 1.4505. Entry stop is 30 pips below. 
and suppose my position is hedged. Now we have come to 1.4505. My position is hedged. I will wait for 10 to 30 minutes. So if I wait for 10 to 30 minutes and if I become a seasoned trader, within 10 minutes I will be able to read the intention and otherwise you can wait up to 30 minutes. If this particular position is making loss, during that observation of 10 to 30 minutes, that means during a downward stop and they filled it and then again they are trying to go up. If I have kept a stop 30 pips below, they would have just simply closed my buy position. Whereas if I kept the hedging order, then obviously the hedging order will be filled. So I will be having a buy position as well as a sell position. So when I have the buy as well as the sell position, I have got that opportunity to continue to trade in the market. If I don't have any position, then I have to think of a fresh position, not trying to uh, hold the position and trying to do that. Now you see that they are coming to the 1.4507, 1.4511. So this is actually being filled because of the stop and so I will try to keep stop and end trade. Then I will not take unlimited risk. I'll keep stop at entry and keep entry stop below that 1.4475. Just 30 pips below. I'll keep another entry stop. So entry stop is just opposite of the original position. So I'll keep another entry stop below that and also keep stop at entry. If they fill the stop at entry and come down quickly, then I have another entry stop to limit the risk. So I will not take more than 30 pips risk at any given time and review the market. And from time to time, I will review the market. Now they are dipped to that of 1.4500. So my entry stop is filled and it is closed at entry. If I am smart enough, then I can just watch for such moves and try to book some one or two pips profit as well. Okay. When I wait for 30 minutes, I know that they are not showing any big profit in that. They are only trying to hit the stops below that 1.55 area. And then I try to close it. Once I close this particular hedge at entry, then I kept another hedging order 4475. I will trail it up because I will not try to maximize the loss up to 60 pips. Then I will try to reduce it to 30 pips again. And I will try to move the entry stop up to 1.4505 and also continue to move it up to 1.4535. Once the market goes above that of 1.4535, say for example 1.4550 or 1.4560, then immediately I will keep stop at entry here and remove the entry stop. So the purpose of the entry stop is to limit the risk to start with. I am not thinking of either way trading or either directional trading there. And in the case of Yen, I took a buy position at 91.04 and currently the market is around the same level. And I took a buy position in the case of Australian dollar 0 0.8487 and current market level is 0 0.8515 and the high is still intact 0 0.8535 and my entry stop, oh sorry. 84.87 Australian dollar is currently trading around 84.68, 84.71. It is making loss, but still my entry stop at 57 is not being filled. Then USD CAD, I have already a buy position and carry forward to so that of the US position. So it is 1.0484 with 30 foot entry stop. Then also in the case of Euro GBP, I have got a Sell position 0 0.8496.7 with an entry stop at 0 0.8539. So the entry stop will be 50 pips above. Let me just check whether it's a level I have taken uh, 0 0.8489. Fifty pips above the entry stop is there. In the case of cross, the entry stop will be fifty pips away. In the case of major, the entry stop can be thirty pips away. Then now let us review with regard to euro yen and GBP yen. 
so they are handling that also so here again the initial low is 111.92 they are still holding near that and the net change is 16 sets negative and you find that uh, euro is showing negative net change of 13 pips and usdn is next showing a negative net change of 12 pips so obviously they are making a contrary move dipping euro as well as yen so i will try to take i will try to take a yeah, buy position because it is closer to the low so 112.92 so it's it has moved up a little bit, doesn't matter. So, I am taking a buy position here with an entry stop of 6. Then, also in the case of GBBN, they are showing a negative net change of 72 pips or 69 pips. Now, the, lo the new low is 131.91 and they are holding closer to the result low and they are not breached the low again in 30 minutes of observation from 14 to 14.30 GMT. So I will take a buy position at 132.07 with an entry stop of 50. So you know that the end crosses are very dangerous. Sometimes they make a gain or the loss of about 200 pips, 300 pips, etc. But I am not worried because I am only taking a risk of 50 pips. And if it is hedged and the hedging is making profit of 30 40 pips consistently for about one or two hours, I will simply close my buy position and try to maximize the profit with regard to the sell position. So, if say for example, N e GBBN has dropped to 131 or 130 suddenly, and then I will close my buy position because I will be only blocking about 50 pips as a loss to start with. The rest of the things will be taken as a gain by that of the hedging. Then once they drop another 50 pips after my closing of the buy position, and I will see that <laughs> I am at a break even. If they drop another 50, 100 pips, I am very happy. I am taking a net profit. So when they make big moves, this is the only trading strategy you need to use. So it need not become a prior off. So that you will be able to capitalize such type of extreme moves in that of the market. So now you can see that in the case of GBP, they had dropped it up to below that of 1.45 and triggered some of the stops there. And also in order to drop that euro GBP yen, they made a little bit of downward move. And subsequently, they are gaining level. So this is how you have to understand that without cutting the low, they try to go closer to that of the low. They did it in the case of USDN around 13, 30 a minute. Uh, 14, uh, 25 GMT, and now they have done it in the case of GPB. So they make a little bit of volatile move and try to hit the stops before making for the gains in those currencies. So these are all the positions I have taken, and you can just do it in a demo trading, or you can just note it as a paper trading and see how exactly the trading goes. Then, if this particular methodology is suitable, you can use it. And I am not charging anything for that. I am only giving an idea. And you can build up over this idea using your knowledge. And that way you will be able to really get the benefit out of that. And if you have got any criticism, you can always give it here. Or any uh, setback in this particular trading strategy. So I am willing to discuss over that. So let me minimize the PowerPoint presentation. And... Take up the questions which are asked. Hope I had done all the review work. Uh, so I explained to you with regard to the timings of the market. How exactly the market starts by 13.30 GMT. Then 14 GMT we had taken a decision. Between 14 and 14.10 GMT we had taken a trading position. And we wanted to do it. Take the position. So in that process I explained that you can fine tune that. By keeping about 5.10 pips below that of the market or sometimes five pips below that of the market, a buy order if it is closer, then they will give a definite fill when they are making a small up and down move. Then in that process you will be able to fine tune your buy and your entry stop will be 30 pips away Then the chances of hitting your entry stop will be remote. So that is what fine tuning methodology you can follow it. Between 14, 14, uh, 14 to 14, 10 GMT you can try to enter if the market is near that of the high take a sell position. 
section is not breached to the high. Then if the market is near the low and not breached to the low, trade take a bad position. Similarly, uh, European session is over. This is the old slide. The European session, the session timing there not changed. Sorry for that. So it is 0030 to 7 GMT Japanese session. Gap time is 7 to 730 GMT. The European session starts by 730 GMT. So at that time, by 8 GMT, between 8 and 18 GMT, you can see whether the market is near the high or near the low. In case if they've gone above the, to the high, you can do a breakout trade by 8, 10 GMT and try to close it before 9.30 GMT. The first early session, you try to close it or use a trailing stop to maximize the profit in case the going is good. So this is very important. So that is how the basic trading strategy works. So if the market has not breached the high or the low, you try to take sell near that of the high or try to take buy near that of the low. And in case if the market breaches the high or the low, then you can do a breakout trade, a sell below that of the low or buy above that of the high. And keep a hedging order below that of the initial high or in the case of the sell position, keep a hedge order buy above that of the initial low. Then you will be able to capitalize the profit. So, there is no question of bullishness and bearishness as far as I am concerned. I only take the trading decision based on that. So, in the blog, you would have noticed that I give the call that there is going to be a dip and then rise. It doesn't mean that I am bullish. Okay. So, don't presume that I am bullish or bearish in the market. I am only finding out that the expected market moves. So, whether there is a buy and sell trade opportunity or a sell and buy trade opportunity in the given condition and accordingly you have to take the position. That is all. Nothing more than that. You have to understand it. Then, coming to that of the advantages of hedging. So, hedging is used instead of a stop. So, it is a very convenient tool. You can use it instead of a stop. Suppose I have kept the hedging order and suddenly there is some, something happens in the market and suddenly the market moves about 100, 200 pips away from it unexpectedly and I attended some other work and come and seen it and see that the market is quite away from it. I do not want to carry this particular trade or try to improve on it. So what I simply do is close the original position with the hedging even after one hour or two hours or five hours or even after several days. Only thing is the platform might charge overnight interest. So, 30 pips, I just incurred loss, but still I was having enough time to review the trade. Whether the hedging was filled because of stop and or the hedging was filled because of a wrong directional position. Whether the hedging was filled due to some other condition. So, you will be able to identify and then decide upon it. So, in a stop which instantaneously close your holding position. Whereas the hedging does not co close it. So, such a great advantage is to we are deprived of now. Then, hedging is used to continue trade when the market moves in our favor. So, when the position is hedged, I can simply keep stop at entry and just watch the market. Let them drop about 100, 200 pips, doesn't matter. Suppose I got a buy position at 1.26 in the case of euro. Afterwards, they dropped it up to 1.21. I am not worried. 30 pips below or my hedging got filled which is making profit. I can simply keep stop at entry till such time they come back to that 1.26 and I continue the trading. So that is one trade which is pending. Secondly, after reviewing the trade I find that my hedging is continuously making profit. I can take a sell and buy trade as another trade and try to maximize the profit and take the advantage of the market. Doesn't mean that I am struck just because one position is hedged. Then hedging can be used to do either way trading. Suppose I got a buy position at 1.26 in the case of euro and 1.2570 is the hedging. Then afterwards all the way they had dropped it. I kept stop at entry. Then I found that they had dropped nearly about 300, 400 pips from there. And afterwards beyond that they are not closing around that particular level. They always try to close it around 1.22 but they are not coming to that 1.2 and afterwards. So what I thought. It is better to close that particular hedging with a profit and keep another hedging order 30 pips below in order to limit the risk 
and when they gain the level then i trail the hedging order upward this is time i am able to keep stop at entry at 1.2 in case if they hedged it fine i'll wait let them drop anywhere they want and then subsequently i'll try to book profit in the hedging and come up once i go above that of 1.26 i'll close it otherwise i can take another buy order at 1.21 or 22 level and then close both the positions above the average so i am out of that positions and in all positions i have made net profit so either way trading strategy is possible by using the hedging the hedging can be used to reverse the trade when the other way going is good so you have seen the last week or before that there are quick drops in the market so suppose you got hedged and the hedging is consistently making profit for 2 hours then similarly you know that you are able to identify in the net changes in the live market code page it is gone up beyond 75 pips so when it has gone beyond 75 pips then i watch it carefully when they are whether they are making for the downward stop end and if they are not not making for the downward stop end below that as a low then i hold it in case if they make more than that then immediately i close my buy position and try to maximize the profit with it of the hedging so in that buy position suppose i have made a loss of 70 pips already 40 pips profit is being blocked by my hedging position then another 30 pips drop i will have a break even then further drop from there i will be in net profit so that way if you are smart enough you can do either way trading so it is not that you have to necessarily do either way trading you can keep stop at entry and watch it also that is a very simple technique without troubling you as much then in the case of hedging is used to hold the position and continue trading when time permits the event of emergency you can just hedge the position and leave the trade and even after a few hours you can come and attend to that because emergency is a common thing anybody can uh, uh, get it at any given time so there is no hard and fast rule that we will not have emergency in the event of emergency you need not feel bad and there is no need to close your position and attend to that or just leave the position open and attend to that and come back and become a surprised person that the market has gone against you about 300 400 pips many people have incurred that sort of loss because they attended to the emergency and come back and found that the market is making huge loss for them so if they use the hedging they can simply hedge the position and go or keep a hedging order to limit the risk below that of the low and attend to their work that is also possible now in the case of gbp they have come down to that of the low again so the the bid is 1.4492 the ask is 1.4497 and the low 1.4492 is still intact so they are trying to induce the long holders to liquidate the buy position before making the rise because during the rise a lot of people would have taken a buy position of 1.46 or 1.4580 on things like that looking into some of the technicals or looking for a breakout trade and they want them to liquidate now they have cut the low in the case of gbp 1.4489 is the current low so i have kept the hedging order at 1.4475 so we always identify and if it have trailed it i was talking to you otherwise i would have taken it up to that of 1.45 level and got it hedged so it doesn't matter any level we can just if the question of affordability if we can afford to block about 70 pips or 50 pips fine if we can afford only 30 pips fine that way you can handle it continuously so if the hedging facility is available you can attend to other work and continue the trading as well then hedging can be used to close the position at any time frame instead of stopping out of the position during uncertainty as i explained if the market has moved 200 pips or 300 pips away from the position still your original position is making 30 pips loss with that of the hedging and there is a provision available in the trading platform close with the hedging position if you close both the positions still you will have only 30 pips loss so that is the advantage of it then hedging can be used to spread the risk with a limited risk in each of the positions there are some people who go in for an average so every 50 pips or 100 pips they try to average the position as one mini lot and try to maximize the profit when they move upward 
and they try to do without a stop. So instead of doing that sort of trade, you can use the hedging order instead of a stop. And if they go downward, you need not even look into the platform all the time. And you can simply place the orders every 150 pips buy order and 30 pips below a hedging order and continue like that. And every day you can come any convenient time to you and open the trading account and see. You'll find that the market is showing the profit in some of the hedged positions and some of the original positions, etc. Because the market keeps making up and down moves. And if you want to close the hedging sell position, then you try to close it near that of the low set for the day. And if you want to close the buy hedging order, you try to close it near that of the high set for the day. So that if you keep further hedging order, it will not be filled so easily. So this is how you have to keep an understanding of that and try to make use of the hedging. Then hedging will not create any uncertainty to you or it will not block your money. And there is a saying in a market that if you use hedging, you do not know how to trade. But I totally disagree with them. And that means they do not know how to use hedging effectively. And suppose I do not know Greek. And I cannot say that Greek is not a language. So it is something like that. Then hedging can be used to spread the risk, I explained. Then hedging can be used to for breakout trade. Suppose you want to take a buy position in the case of euro. 1.2451 if they break and above that you want to take a buy position. You can take a buy position and keep a hedging order below that of the initial high 1.2451. That way you can do it. Otherwise, in the case of GDP, you wanted to do a breakout trade on the downside. You find that 1.4492 was the hedging and my uh, hedging order is closed to be filled. 1.4475 is the current low. And in case you find that they are dropping further and you can simply hedge. Uh, take a fresh sell position, hedge the original position and take a fresh sell position and try to book profit in that. So that way you can go in for a breakout trade and if the positions are hedged, you will be able to really understand where the market is heading. Rather than looking to that as a technical analysis, you can just review yourself. Okay, I am holding a buy position. How, dis how I am having a discomfort with regard to the buy position? Or if I am holding a sell position, what an amount of discomfort I am facing it now. Accordingly, you can understand the person who has taken the opposition position would have really benefited from that as a market. So immediately you also try to take the opposite position. When the hedging facility is not available, you will not be able to take such position. If you try to take a sell position in the market, it will immediately close your buy position. So that is the advantage of hedging. And besides, hedging can be used without additional margin in many of the platforms. So if you if the leverage is one is to hundred or one is to two hundred, if it is one is to hundred, they would have taken about thousand dollars for your standard lot. And if you take a hedging position, they would not have taken another margin of thousand dollars for the position. In case if you trade with two accounts, one using for the buy, another one for the sell, and you will be blocking two thousand dollars in the margin. On the buy side thousand and the sell side thousand. Whereas also, if they make extreme moves, if you are trying to use the two accounts, because many of the US trading platforms, they are recommending to the traders without disclosing the danger of it. They only say that you can still use it as a hedging by making two, keeping two accounts. But if they make about 600, 700 pips move against you, in <coughs> against you, you can probably take a sell position in another account. But the account which is holding a buy position would have incurred a margin call and they don't explain to you that. So this is the uh, trade trick of the trade you have to understand. Only the advantages they disclose, the risk, they put it in small letters so that you don't read and you simply sign all the agreements and later on if any question you will say that you know that there is a risk involved in trading and obviously you have to accept the risk. That is what they conclude. So you have to understand that in the financial market there are a lot of tricks and uh, there are a lot of hidden, hidden agenda and so you have to really read them carefully from the persons who are, who are promoting it and subsequently you should be able to judge the situation and act accordingly.
So my hedging order at 1.4475 is filled. Okay. So this particular hedging order 1.4475 is the low, exact low, which is filled. So I will watch for 10 to 30 minutes, and this is the second time my hedging is filled. So I will exactly watch for 30 minutes before closing it. So first one I will try to watch for 10 to 30 minutes and try to close it. The second one I will try to watch for 30 minutes fully then only decide whether I can close it or not. <coughs> because they start cutting the low 1.4492 to 1.44784 then 75 up to this. So they, then they come down to that of 1.4473. So once they go below, I'll try to keep stop at entry and watch how far they are going. So they made about 106 pips net change negative, and you know the potency is 250 pips in the case of GBP. So since they are holding most of the uh, positions, and you know that they are dropping GBP as well as USD yen, so you can understand they are busy handling the yen cross is the strategy. And also Euro they are not dropped much, whereas GBP they are dropped. As a result, they are made a gain in the case of Euro GBP. So this is how you will be able to identify, okay, what pair they are trying to handle. Rather than becoming panic, my position is hedged. So what could happen? Probably GBP can go to 1.41 or 1.42 or it can go probably to 1.39. If you think like that, then I only be under the grip of the panicness nothing more than that and after that I will not be able to do any wise trading so let me minimize the PowerPoint presentation and take up the questions which are asked here I already breached the time given to me and I will try to answer to the questions okay, for Euro GBV what is the deal so Euro GBV they are expected to drop and they made the gain again and they are not breached they reached the high by one pip. Earlier the high was 1.8535 and now they have formed their high as 1.358536. I got a hedging order at 1.8539. So I will only watch how exactly they are going to hit my hedging or not. So I am not worried about any other thing. And I also see how exactly they are handling Euro as well as GBP. So I understand that GBP they dropped it to 44.71. Again, they made the downward stop and, and subsequently they stopped it. And it is very evidential that they are only making a downward stop. And here, by showing red, 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 red continuously <coughs> and not a real fall. So I will hold the position and try to keep stop at entry after about 30 minutes. Then if they hit me at stop at entry, then I will continue to trade. And if they drop it, then I will wait. Otherwise, I can just close my buy position with about 50, 60 pips law and try to maximize the profit on the sell side because the downward potency is another 100 pips in case if there is a real drop they want to make. Anyhow, I am keeping hedging order as soon as the position is taken. That is very important because we should never be of the opinion that after I take the position, the market will continue to kill the profit. It might work and it may not work. And so any analysis for that matter, it might work or it might show error. But doesn't mean that you have to just take chances with that type of analysis and try to start losing money. Instead, use the hedging to limit the risk. That is why I always give importance to the trading strategy rather than the forecast. Then what is your expectations of Euro USD in another one month time? So. Probably I'll just talk about it later on. This is not the occasion. During Asian session live market analysis, I'll explain. What is the expected GBP move by close? I'm expecting a rise in the case of GBP. They are dropped at about 113 pips. Whereas in the case of Euro is only 27 pips drop. So this is surely a methodology they have followed. Just dropping GBP, dropping USD and a contrarian move. So such contrarian moves are mainly to handle the crosses for the weekend before coming to the other majors. So I will keep the hedging order to limit the risk. If they are hedged, I will try to book some profit with the hedging and try to book some profit with the original position as well. So see, the Monday is a holiday in US. Do you see 
this as a trigger for liquidation in the late trading today. No, see, it is only holiday in the case of US because the traders are spread all over the world, even though the players are situated in US. But they have their counterparts spread all over the world, so they will continue to make the moves. Probably, if the volume is less, they might make subdued moves. Before that, they will definitely make some volatile moves in the market Monday. So they gained the levels yesterday significantly, and afterwards, you no, know, a lot of people would have turned long yesterday, and they would not have booked the profit during further rise. So they are inducing them to liquidate the long positions before making further rise. Nothing more than that. And similarly, today, a lot of people would have taken the buy position during the rise. That's what it, it indicates now. <coughs> the expected forecast is rise, but the rise is not happening. But I am not simply spending my time in blaming the forecast. Instead, I am trying to protect my trade and try to earn out that position what I have. And that is reality. The forecast can be true or forecast can go wrong and market can go against our expectation at any given time. Then Eric, entry stop at 1.45 is a buy. Did you say so? No, entry stop will be a sell order. 1.4475. I have I mentioned it as a buy order. So entry stop I said 1.4475. Still, that's what I said. It is not a buy. Because I have taken a buy position, obviously the entry stop will be opposite position. Then, uh, what is your opinion about Euro USD? Will it breach 1.2451 high and go above? See, I am expecting them to close near that as a high today towards the close of the European session, I mean US session, and I am expecting a sudden spike during that of the late US session. Before that, they will try to handle the crosses and hit the stops and induce the traders to liquidate the long position, but the players are buyers. Then Abel, at start of London, GBB breach initial low and the buy limit was triggered and for next 30 minutes, GBP continued to fall. So, did you mean that 8.30 GMT, do you mean what wait till 10.30 GMT? <coughs> so, I explained that uh, you have to wait till uh, from 7.30 to 8 GMT is the first 30 minutes from the start of the European session. Then from between 8 and 8.10 GMT, during a small dip near that of the low, you can take a buy position. That's what I said. I think that uh, I have not updated that particular slide uh, with regard to the market timing which was prepared in the month of March. There was a transition from that of the standard time to that of the daylight saving time. So I made the changes with regard to US from 1330 the US session whereas the European session I failed to change it to that of 730. Sorry for that. Then Caesar. Uh, watch out for gold and today and month beginning Monday. What is your direction input for gold? Gold is expected to slide. They are making high level consolidation and offering gold. And you can just watch how exactly they are going to drop it again on Monday. And towards close also they will just book profit and liquidate their positions. And on Monday also they will drop. Can we take a buy if they have not cut the low in another hour? Yes, definitely you can take a buy if they have not breached the low. But in the case of GBP, they have breached the low again. So wait for them to settle down. They are simply handling all the GBP crosses. So wait for them to settle it and subsequently take the buy position. There is no hurry in the market. Market keeps giving opportunities. The only thing is we have to patiently wait and read. Spend more time in observing the market and take the quick trading decision and exit out of the positions as quickly as possible. Don't hold the last making position for a long time and that is not a trading strategy at all. That is incapability. Can we take a buy if they have not? Yes. Then do you expect Australian dollar to make a push down before the session ends today? Australian dollar, the initial low was 0 0.8464 and they formed a new low as a stop from 0 
and still they are holding around 84.76 only in the case of GBP they have breached the low and even in the case of yen they are not breached the low they come closer but there are the low they are not breached so it is a sheer downward stop and only in the case of GBP so normally they use GBP to create the market sentiment that's what they are trying to do it at the end of the day you will see how exactly they are trying to behave with regard to GBP then you will understand what I said is true so I think it, I, it has become 15 GMT so let me go back to that of the PowerPoint presentation so these are all the positions I now kept stop at entry the stop at entry is almost to be filled in the case of GBP and once it is filled I will keep another 30 pips below another hedging order quickly rise it when they gain the level to that of 44.75 and then to 45.05 if it is hedged then I will again watch for 30 minutes and try to handle it so this is an uh, exercise you have to do it and you should not become petty and you have to mechanically do this handling only then you will be able to prosper and if you are hesitant and you want the market to give you glory simply after you taking the position and it is not an easy cake for you to eat and this is not the place probably you have to look for some other gambling then but here you need to really use your intelligence and smartness and tactics and try to earn you know that whether you do a buy and sell trade or a sell and buy trade the players are not going to give you easy money you have to necessarily slog and get the money out and you have to use the strategy to win from the other market and if people use this sort of trading strategies and I am sure that Nobody in future will make a statement that 95% of the traders are losing money in the market. My main objective is that those who have lost the money should be able to get back the money from that other market. I am doing it as a mission and that is why I am giving this a forecast and also the blog and the webinars and no other motive. So I take this opportunity. Thank everybody who have come here, listen to this talk and I will again give the Asian session live market analysis on Monday. Thank you one and all.